Hi, my name is Surendra Dara. I am an entomologist and sustainable crop production researcher and educator with expertise in integrated pest management, microbial control of arthropod pests and plant diseases, and biostimulants. This presentation is a part of my sustainable ag talks and focuses on using biologicals as an integral part of IPM programs for insecticide resistance management. Please subscribe to this channel to get notified about the new videos and support my efforts to promote sustainable food production. This presentation covers parts of my earlier presentations on using biologicals in IPM and pesticide resistance and has some new information on the ubiquity of biologicals in every IPM category. Insecticide resistance management or IRM generally refers to insects but can be applied to all kinds of pests. There are various definitions for biologicals in agriculture and my definition includes any biotic input or abiotic input of biological origin that is used either for crop production purpose that is to promote plant growth and health or for crop protection purpose that is to control pests. These include biocontrol agents, botanical, microbial or other biopesticides, biostimulants, soil amendments, and beneficial microbes that do not have pesticidal properties and non-pesticidal biochemicals such as pheromones. If we look at how each of these work, biocontrol agents work through predation or parasitization. Biopesticides are active either through contact or by infection. Biostimulants induce systemic resistance and stimulate various natural processes that benefit plants. Soil amendments promote plant growth and health directly or indirectly and somewhat similar to biostimulants and non-pesticidal beneficial microbes improve bioavailability of nutrients and improve the nutrient and water absorption and impart tolerance to biotic and abiotic stresses. Materials available in these three categories are more or less similar and some of them play similar roles. Depending on the active ingredient, the way they are used, they might fall into one of these uh, three categories that we discussed here. And the last one is pheromones, which are chemicals mimicking biological molecules and are used for mating disruption. If we look at various integrated pest management options, we can see that biologicals can be used in every category. Since Bacillus thuringiensis is a microbial control agent, transgenic crops containing Bt toxins can be considered as an example for using biologicals in host plant resistance, at least in the context of this presentation. Then biostimulants and related agronomic inputs are used as a part of cultural control. Biocontrol with predatory arthropods and parasitoids is very popular in many crop production systems as we know. And as a part of behavioral control, pheromones are successfully used for controlling several pests. Biopesticides can also be used in some devices to attract pests and kill them. Somewhat similar to this, netting used in fields, greenhouses, or, or animal and poultry farms can be treated with microbial or other biopesticides. Then microbial control with various entomopathogens or microbial metabolites is a well-known non-chemical control option. Various chemical molecules from plants, microbes, or other sources are also very popular against various pests. As you see, biologicals are an integral part of every IPM option and can be effectively used at every stage of crop production with or as an alternative to synthetic inputs. Now we will quickly look at various biologicals and the first group is biocontrol agents. Parasitic wasps and various arthropod predators are used through conservation biocontrol, classical or augmentative biocontrol strategies. Classical biocontrol is very effective for managing various invasive pests, 
and augmentative biocontrol is very popular in greenhouses or several open field production systems. We have several biopesticide products in the market for a variety of pests and these are based on live microorganisms, microbial metabolites or a combination of both, botanical extracts and peptides and other organic molecules. If we look at entomopathogens, there are bacteria, fungi, microsporidia, nematodes, and baculoviruses that include nucleopolyhedroviruses and granuloviruses. Except for microsporidia, various commercial formulations based on other entomopathogens are available in the US. Each kind of entomopathogen has a unique mode of action and is ideal for one or more situations. Bacteria, microsporidia, and viruses need to be ingested by the host. While bacteria have a relatively broader host range, viruses are very specific to certain species. Fungi cause infections when they come in contact with their host. Nematodes actively search for their hosts, enter the host body through natural openings, and kill them with the help of symbiotic bacteria. Depending on the type of pest, where it feeds on a plant and how it feeds, these entomopathogens can be used for managing a wide variety of arthropod pests. Here are some examples of microbe-based pesticides that do not have live organisms. The first two are biological molecules of bacteria produced through fermentation. Both Evermectins and Spinosad are popular pesticides and successfully used against several pests. The other two are examples of products that contain heat-killed bacteria and their fermentation solids. These are relatively new and are used as feeding deterrents and or biopesticides. When it comes to botanical pesticides, we have a very long list of phytochemicals extracted from various plant parts. Here, I also included an example from blue-green algae, but rest are from plants, and they have insecticidal, caricidal, or fungicidal properties. Limonoid, like azoderectin, is also an insect growth regulator, repellent, and antifeedant, in addition to its insecticidal and caricidal activities. And some studies also show its biostimulant properties. Here are a few examples of products that are based on proteins or other organic compounds and used as pesticides or biostimulants. Blad is a polypeptide derived from sweet lupin seeds and used as a fungicide. Spider venom peptide based active ingredient is new in the market and has its own IRAC mode of action group of 32. Chitosan is a polysaccharide and the one derived from shellfish is used as a fungicide and a biostimulant. Several synthetic analogs have been developed from natural pesticides to improve the product stability, efficacy, mass production capability and other features and also to optimize the cost of production. Abamectin for controlling insects, mites and parasitic worms pyrethroids, neonicotinoids, and spinosad for controlling various insects, and strobilurins for controlling fungal diseases are some examples of popular synthetic pesticides based on natural compounds. There are several instances of pest resistance to both these synthetic and biological active ingredients, and it is important to follow IPM principles wherever there is a risk of resistance development. We know that interactions among plants, beneficial and harmful microorganisms in the soil or on plants, pests, natural enemies, other organisms, and various environmental factors are very complex and are influenced by each other and also by economic practices. Some of the biologically active ingredients also have multiple roles as biostimulants or biopesticides. For example, Entomopathogenic fungi, which are primarily known for controlling arthropod pests, also promote plant growth and improve nutrient and water intake. 
Several studies also showed that they antagonize plant pathogens. So they have entomopathogenic, endophytic, mycorrhiza-like, and disease antagonizing properties. So it helps to understand various roles of biologicals and their interactions with others and develop strategies that can maximize their potential for both agronomic and pest control purposes. Now let us look at induced resistance in plants and how pests or biostimulants play a role in this. When plants are exposed to pests, virulent or avirulent pathogens, non-pathogenic microorganisms and some chemicals, plant defenses involving the production of salicylic acid and pathogenesis related proteins are triggered and this mechanism of resistance is called systemic acquired resistance. When plants are exposed to beneficial microorganisms, another pathway involving the production of jasmonic acid, ethylene and pathogenesis related proteins is activated and it is called induced systemic resistance. While systemic acquired resistance is a defense response to biotic and abiotic stressors, induced systemic resistance is preparing the plants for potential stresses. Various biologicals we discussed so far induce these responses and using some of them as prophylactically can improve plant health without the need for pesticide applications. What we see here are various microbial inputs that are commercially available for controlling pests and diseases, building soil health, or for biostimulation. As mentioned earlier, some of these organisms or related species are used for more than one purpose. Although certain products are registered for specific purposes, when they are used for that intended purpose, they might be benefiting plants in other ways either by triggering defense mechanisms, improving plant growth and yield potential, imparting tolerance to stressors, and so on. Understanding these interactions and their impacts can reduce the need for pesticidal or fertilizer applications and contribute to resistance management and sustainable crop production. So far, we have seen various biologicals and their functions. We will now look at where and how some of these biologicals can be used. We can treat the seeds with biopesticides or biostimulants to protect from pests or promote germination and plant establishment. We can treat the transplants at the nursery or at the time of planting or immediately after planting. Then we can apply biologicals either to soil or as foliar application. In some cases, Certain inputs like biochar can be added to promote microbial activity in the soil. Beneficial microbes can be especially useful for soil application after fumigation to build their populations before pathogens re-establish. Depending on the kind of biological input, we can use them with fertilizers with or without pesticides throughout the crop cycle. Biocontrol agents can be used through conservation or releases at various stages of crop production. Wherever using a biological reduces or substitutes for a chemical input, it contributes to resistance management. What you see here is bee vectoring or entomovectoring of microbial pesticides. Bees are not in any category of biologicals we discussed but I just included this as an example of delivering biologicals with pollinators. When bees exit their hives, they walk through an attachment containing biopesticides and pick up the active ingredient, which is usually some kind of fungal inoculum. As they visit plants, they distribute the inoculum on various flowers. Bee vectoring is commercially used in greenhouses and other situations primarily to deliver biological fungicides for controlling botrytis, fruit rot, and other diseases. Research shows that entomopathogenic fungi can also be delivered by pollinators for arthropod pest control. 
Pollinators get rid of most of the fungal inoculum during foraging and high temperatures in the hives are usually unfavorable for fungal infections if a few spores are carried back into the hives. When biopesticides can be delivered through pollinators, it will reduce the need for chemical pesticide applications and the associated costs. A strategy like this will also contribute to resistance management. So what can biologicals actually do? What we have learned about biologicals is that they improve plant vigor, enable plants to resist stressors or promote plant growth and yields to compensate for pest damage. They reduce crop losses and control pest populations. Through one or more mechanisms and use strategies, they contribute to insecticide or pesticide resistance management. Arthropods develop resistance to pesticides through various mechanisms. Altered behavior to avoid pesticides, reduced penetration to lessen the toxicity, modification to the target site so that pesticide is not toxic, increased sequestration or excretion to move pesticides to fat bodies and other non-target areas in the body or eliminating from their body, various metabolic defenses that reduce the negative impact of pesticides, and having a symbiotic relationship with microorganisms that degrade pesticides are the mechanisms arthropods use to resist pesticides. Arthropods develop resistance to both synthetic and biological pesticides, and overusing of any kind of pesticide can lead to resistance problems. Biopesticides based on toxic molecules or metabolites or with modes of action similar to those of synthetic pesticides are at higher risk for resistance development. That is why it is important to take advantage of multiple options that directly or indirectly contribute to pest suppression and avoid repeated use of any particular option that can cause resistance issues. Here are some important points for successfully using biologicals as IPM tools for resistance management in both organic and conventional production systems. First, understand the biological, its mode of action, and choose a high quality product appropriate for the target use. Develop use strategies based on the pest, its life stage, severity of infestation, affordability, of the product and other conditions that suit the farm needs. Follow storage, handling, and application guidelines so that live organisms are viable and effective. Apply biologicals at an appropriate time to maintain their efficacy. If multiple materials are applied in a tank mix, make sure that biologicals are compatible with those materials. To reduce the risk of resistance development and to maintain control efficacy, combine or rotate biologicals with other compatible control options. Regularly monitor their efficacy and potential negative impacts on plants, environment, or other beneficials. And also look for signs of resistance development if biopesticides are used. Overuse of inexpensive control options can quickly render them ineffective and can have a long-term negative impact on pest management. Consider both long-term and short-term impacts of pest management practices and try to incorporate biologicals for both effective pest management and maintaining the longevity of available options. In conclusion, biologicals are very important tools for sustainable agriculture, both for economic and crop protection purposes. Biologicals are an integral part of various IPM options and important for pesticide resistance management. A thorough knowledge of various biologicals and their use strategies is necessary for their success. Thank you for listening to this presentation and feel free to contact me or connect with me on social media please consider subscribing to this channel.